Welcome to another episode of Science Made Simple. I'm Farhan. I'm a science specialist here at the Pick Lab. In this video, I'll be analyzing a past year examination question from the topic of digestion. I've placed the question in a handout and you may download it for free by clicking on the link in the description box below. So let's begin. Question 6. Which statement about digestion in the stomach is not true? Out of the three main classes of food, carbohydrates, protein and fats, which one is digested in the stomach? Only protein is digested in the stomach. And what is the name of the enzyme that digests the protein? Now remember, all enzyme names end with an ASE. Let me write that down. And the name of the enzyme always matches the name of the food or substrate. Now since it's digesting protein, the name of the enzyme is protease. And what is the product you get here? Will you get amino acids? No, you're only going to get polypeptides. Now, this is the first step of protein digestion. If this does not happen in the stomach, there is another organ that can help to carry out this step one. Do you think it's the small intestines or the large intestines? It has to be the small intestines since large intestines do not carry out any digestion of food. So it can happen in the SI, which is the small intestine, with the help of the same enzyme protease, but now it's produced by the pancreas. Now, what is step two of protein digestion? The polypeptides will be broken down finally to form amino acids. And what is the name of the enzyme? Remember, the name of the enzyme must end with an A-S-E. Is it going to be polypeptidase? It's just peptidase here. And where does step two of protein digestion happen? Now, this can only happen in the small intestines. Now that we've gone through how protein is digested, let's take a look at the options to look for statements which are not true. Statement 1. Gastric juice is produced in the stomach. Is this true? Yes, the name of the fluid produced in the stomach is gastric juice. But what does gastric juice contain? Now, it contains two main substances. It's an acid. And what's the name of the acid? The name of the acid is hydrochloric acid, HCl. And what's the other substance in gastric juice? We mentioned it just now. It's the enzyme protease. Now, all enzymes have their optimum pH, much like a favorite pH where they work best. Now, what do you think is the pH of the stomach with the hydrochloric acid produced inside? It's going to be acidic. So, protease works best in acidic environment of pH 2. And that's the main function of the hydrochloric acid is to provide an acidic environment for protease to work best. So this statement is true. Now let's take a look at statement two. Proteins are completely digested in the stomach. Now is this true? We've already established that protein digestion requires two steps. And do we get the final product amino acids in the stomach? No, we only get polypeptides in the stomach. So statement two is false because proteins are not completely digested in the stomach. In fact, that is our answer. But let's take a look at the other options. Statement 3. The hydrochloric acid in the stomach helps protease to work. Is this true? Can you still recall what's the optimum pH that protease works best? It is pH 2. The hydrochloric acid provides an acidic environment so that protease works best in the stomach. So this statement is true. But what are the other functions of hydrochloric acid? The hydrochloric acid also helps to activate the enzyme and helps to kill most bacteria. I'm going to write that down. Now, let's take a look at statement 4. The stomach muscles can contract and relax to physically break down food. Strangely, you can feel or even hear this phenomenon when you're hungry and when your stomach is empty. Yes, it's actually your stomach growling. What are the muscles doing when your stomach is growling? The muscles are actually contracting and relaxing to churn the stomach contents. Now, why do they do that? It's actually to mix the food with all the gastric juices. Not only that, the churning of the food also helps to break the food into smaller pieces, just like how the food blender in the kitchen works. Now, why do you want the food to be in smaller pieces? How does that change the surface area to volume ratio of the food? It actually helps to increase the surface area to volume ratio of the food. This exposes the food to more digestive juices and how does this help digestion? It actually helps to increase the rate of digestion. Let's write that down. So increase surface area to volume ratio of the food 
and this helps to increase digestion. So this statement is also true. The only false statement here is statement 2, and this confirms our answer as option 2. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found this video useful, do give us a thumbs up. If you want to check out the other videos, click on the link on the right hand side. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos. Thank you, and I see you next time. Bye!